so I apologize for all of the bird chirping and the uh, seam of the wood behind me that is not parallel with the screen because that's going to be a thing that bothers me and if it bothers you, I don't blame you and I apologize. But today I figured I would come to you from the out of doors as you know I am fond of doing whenever possible um, if you have followed us for a while. Today's review is of the third Flavia de Luz mystery novel in the Flavia de Luz mystery series, which is A Red Herring Without Mustard uh, by Alan Bradley. Flavia de Luz is an 11-year-old girl living in a very, very large, old, ancestral home of hers called Buckshaw, out in uh, this tiny little village called Bishop's Lacey in um, post-World War II England. From the very beginning we know her mother Harriet has died in a Tibetan uh, mountaineering accident and Flavia has never really known her since uh, she died when Flavia was a baby and she's been left to live with her father who was a former colonel in the army. Um, her two sisters Ophelia and Daphne whom she calls Feely and Daffy as well as Mrs. Mullet who is the cook and Dogger who is sort of uh, the colonel's jack-of-all-trades, handyman, chauffeur, very helpful guy. They fought together in the war. So each of the Flavia de Luce mysteries begins with a murder, and I thought this one was a little different because it began with an almost murder. Um, there is a church fair that is happening in the village of Bishop's Lacey that uh, the family attends, and Flavia is having her fortune told by a gypsy fortune teller, whom she then later shows the way home because she is quite ill, and then suddenly finds that while she is parked out in the very vast, extensive, um, sort of fallow fields of Buckshaw, where uh, Flavia and her family live, the old gypsy woman is sort of bludgeoned to near death, and that's not a spoiler, it says it right on the back of the book. It begins with a brutal attack on this woman and then more subsequent sort of terror within the town ensues and Flavia as always rises to the occasion as a young girl with a chemistry lab left over from her old old uncle, great uncle Tar, um, and she has a pa passion for poison, um, I believe it says in the very first novel. So she's got this passion for poison and loves to solve mysteries scientifically and figure everything out before the constabulary uh, folks do, which leads to some very interesting uh, dialogue with the Inspector Hewitt, who is always assigned to these murder cases. So in this book, because the accident happened on uh, Flavia's family's property, um, she winds up being a suspect in the investigation, and I think that definitely turns the tables a little bit for this particular story. In the past, she's always just sort of been poking her nose where it's not really necessary, and sort of just kind of getting in the way of uh, the police and the inspector often, and this time she is still doing that, but it is more suspicious since she is actually being considered a suspect. And as always, along the way, she makes friends with these very unlikely sounding auxiliary characters who are always mostly fleshed out, but not quite. And that's probably one of my main critiques of this particular series, is that the auxiliary characters aren't always built as well as they could be. Flavi is a quick-witted, sharp-tongued girl who just sees the faults of adults more than anyone ever could. She has a keen sense of hearing and a keen sense of smell, and she is just, she's very full of herself, but in the best, most possible, sort of sparkling English wit type way. Um, and even at 11 years old, she understands a lot more about people than I think a lot of adults do, which is what is so infuriating for the adults that she happens to sort of work alongside. There are indeed, as the title suggests, several red herrings throughout the book, which Flavia does wind up picking through um, to try and discover the truth. Uh, but that also leads me to the titles. The, the covers of these books are all done in the same style. It's always a solid color with the drawing in the center, Alan Bradley at the bottom, and then in this font at the top, the title. And the titles are always taken uh, from me meaningful quotations. And A Red Herring Without Mustard uh, does sort of play a role in the actual prose as well as the quotation at the preface of the book. And I do applaud Alan Bradley for coming up with these interesting titles. Uh, the first in this series is The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie. The second is The Weed That Strings the Hangman's Bag. This is obviously A Red Herring Without Mustard. And the next one I believe is I Am Half Sick of Shadows all of which don't really tell you anything about the plot, um, but they all do tie in marvelously 
to the prose. Lastly, I want to mention just the, the writing quality of Flavia's sisters, Ophelia and Daphne. They are horrid to her. Um, the three of them as sisters really don't like each other. They're always trying to convince her that their mother Harriet didn't want Flavia and that she shouldn't really be part of the family and that at the first opportunity that they are going to kick her out and make her leave. Um, and it's this book where you can see that really start to take its toll on Flavia. Normally she just goes up to her laboratory and concocts these sort of vicious but mild poisons to get back at her sisters. And in this book you can really see the, the words of Felia and Daffy start to take root in Flavia and she really wonders whether she should actually be part of this family or not. The story of uh, exactly how Harriet died and more about her and her past and this entire sort of family drama that's happening within the Deleuze household I think will play out through the rest of the series. Um, nothing is ever really seriously explained in any of the books including this one and I think that that's a great story arc that definitely drives these novels forward as well as of course Flavia is and just incredible character. I, I only read a little bit of Nancy Drew when I was younger and I would rank Flavia above her most certainly right up there with Trixie Belden. You all know how much I love Trixie Belden and that's saying something. So four out of five stars overall for a red herring without mustard. Um, the fifth star lost only because some of the auxiliary characters like I said could have been built up and fleshed out a little bit more. I think if they had been further explained it would have been great to know more about them and they could have contributed to the plot more. If you like mysteries as always I really do recommend these. They look beautiful on a shelf. All the Spines are different colors, they are fantastic, and Flavia is incredible. I hope you're all having lovely weeks and lovely lives. I really apologize for the lighting and this asymmetrical wall behind me, and we will see you very soon. We were interrupted by some wild turkey noises because, as I may have mentioned before, I live in a forest, and that is the kind of thing that happens here.